Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, formerly Nature in Your Backyard, and we've gone to a new brand. So today I'm going to talk about monarch caterpillars. <laughs> I just never get tired of watching them do the things that they do and eat. The monarch caterpillar is essentially a tube within a tube eating machine. But let's today, let's take a really close look at the monarch caterpillar and talk about all its parts and its anatomy and how all these things function together to create this organism. The purpose of this life stage is to gain energy to eventually turn into a monarch butterfly. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this invasive. It's like dog. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So if your diet is milkweed leaves and your main goal is to eat, you better have some pretty good jaws. Let's take a look at the caterpillar jaws. Caterpillar jaws are called mandibles. And in this diagram, you can see that the mandibles are on the lower part of the insect's head. And this head is actually a faceplate. It's a scleratized piece of chitin, which uh, makes up the exoskeleton of arthropods, and it's very hard and durable. And when the caterpillar sheds its skin, one of the first things that happens is its faceplate falls off. So there you can see where the mandibles are located. They're very efficient. When you watch a caterpillar eating, you know that those mandibles are very sharp and cut into that leaf, will chew up that leaf material, and it will go into his intestines. His intestines are very well developed because again, essentially, the function of the caterpillar is to gain energy to get ready for the chrysalis where cells will differentiate into all the parts of the monarch adult. Another feature that you can see on the head of the caterpillar, if you look really, really closely, are its eyes. And I found it really hard to get good pictures of the monarch caterpillar because uh, when he wasn't eating, and he was still, he would put his head down like this, right up against the leaf. So I would, had a hard time getting a decent picture of all the different parts here on his head. But he has 12 eyes. There's six on one side, six on the other side. Insect eyes like these are also called ocelli. And these eyes, I don't think they're very good. I don't think the this caterpillar can see very well. And again, he doesn't have a lot of purpose to see because he's not a predator. Usually when we see insects with very well-developed eyes, they're often predators because predators need to go and find their prey. And this caterpillar is already on a milkweed leaf. Its mother laid its eggs on a milkweed. So it doesn't have to go out and try to find milkweed or find prey. So these eyes, these ocelli, are probably more sensitive to light and dark and might be more about catching shadows of potential predators that might be looking to eat a monarch caterpillar. There's, you can see there's six on one side, six on the other side for a total of 12 of these. Now more important to the caterpillar would be the maxillary palps. These are important sensory organs and so these are going to be uh, against the leaf and he can use them to sense. He's probably looking for leaf quality and if a leaf gets dry, he'll move on to the next leaf. So the maxillary palps are probably more important to this caterpillar than his eyes actually are. Looking at some of the head parts, you can see that there are large tentacles that come out on the later instar larva that stick out both in the front and the back. These tentacles are not true antenna. They do have some sensory uses. The ones in the front probably more important than the ones in the back. And biologists talk about the ones in the back and say, well, that might be there to confuse predators 
about which end is the front of the caterpillar and which is the rear. I don't have any real data to back up that theory. His antenna, however, are actually up front and again, low down, pointing towards the leaves. And the antennas are very small, but if you look very carefully, you can see them sometimes when he lifts his head up or when he's eating. So those are more important for sensory. So sensory stuff, eyes not so important, the tentacles not so important, but an antenna and maxillary palps are probably the two most important sensory. So the last important feature you can see on the head end of the caterpillar is the spinnerets. And with the spinneret, the caterpillar can produce silk. The monarch butterfly makes a chrysalis. It doesn't spin a cocoon with silk like moths do, but it still makes silk and still uses it. What does it use it for? Two things. One, it uses it to secure itself to a leaf. There's a lot of wind out there. Milkweed can blow back and forth. You don't want to fall. So the caterpillars have like a safety line and kind of tie themselves down to the leaf while they're eating. The other thing the silk is for is to make a silken pad or a silken button when the caterpillar is ready to go into the pupil stage. And it'll spin a silk pad underneath something it wants to hang from and it'll take its last two prolegs and grab onto that silken pad and hang upside down the J. And I'll talk more about that in the next episode. So let's turn our attention now to the rest of the caterpillar now that we've talked about its head. So the caterpillar monarch butterfly is an insect and we always say insects have, what do we say we have? They have three body parts. So the caterpillar also has three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. The biologists have identified 14 segments in the caterpillar. The first three segments make up the thorax, and the next 11 segments make up the abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen. And of those segments, the first three segments are designated as the thorax, which makes sense because in other insects, the six legs they have are attached to the thorax. And if you look carefully at the monarch caterpillar, you can see that it has true segmented legs that are attached to the thorax. The next section is the abdomen. And when you count down the abdomen, there are 11 segments that make up the abdomen. So three segments for the thorax, and there are 11 segments for the abdomen. So these next 11 segments make up the abdomen, which will later make up the 11 segments of the adult monarch butterfly. Attached to the abdomen, you can see at segment 3, 4, 5, and 6, and again at the few segments that biologists call 9 through 11, there are prolegs. Well, what's a proleg? They're not real legs. They're not segmented legs. And so the biologists call them prolegs. And these prolegs look like they got little suction cups on them. And I've watched my caterpillars go straight up plastic walls in the cages that they have them in when they want to go up to hang in a J to get ready to form a chrysalis. So they are uh, very tactile and they also have hooks on them. So with the prolegs, caterpillars can move in a very, very, I think, amazing and coordinated fashion. And when the caterpillar rears up, you can see those real legs with the segments and the hooks on the end. And when he walks and moves, you can see those prolegs. Another feature you might see on the caterpillars is the spiracles. What are spiracles? They're actually little holes. They're openings in the side of the caterpillar. The caterpillars don't have lungs. Insects don't have lungs. They don't breathe in through their mouth. Like we often think about organisms as breathing in through their mouth. Well, caterpillars don't breathe in through their mouth. Insects don't breathe in through their mouth. They get oxygen in a very simple kind of way by having openings in the side of their body. And these openings open into 
internal tubes that are called tracheae. And oxygen will move into those holes, those spiracles, into the trachea, and oxygen will diffuse throughout its body. So to get the oxygen throughout the body, since it doesn't have a circulatory system uh, like we do, at least not a uh, closed circulatory system, the caterpillars breathe by bringing in oxygen through the spiracles on their body. And they have to have spiracles all along their body. So you might be able to observe them very closely when you see them on a caterpillar. So thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. I hope you enjoyed this segment on caterpillar anatomy. And I hope it gives you a little better appreciation of the complexity of this organism and gives you more opportunity to observe and discover new things about caterpillars. If you like what I'm doing, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. My next episode will be on monarch chrysalises, the J larva, and that transition to the adult stage.